Welcome, beautiful people, and thank you for joining us on Till the Wheels Fall Off, a podcast by Two Folk Couple. I'm Matt. And I'm Paige. And we're here to inspire others, to bring you guys into our lives and tell you a little bit about our journey. Over 20 years together, we've learned a few things. We're going to work toward being the best version of yourself possible. We're going to dig into building a positive mindset, discuss mental health, addiction recovery, improving fitness, building businesses, and insight into what it takes to navigate life today. Welcome back. Welcome back. To another episode of Till the Wheels Fall Off. I'm Matt. I'm Paige. And there is still time and still space if you want to come to our workshop on June 8th in McKinney, Texas. It is coming up quick, just a few Saturdays away. Uh, hey, if you're in DFW, you don't have an excuse. I know. Because we got you're... people flying in from everywhere for yes. this thing. Yes. So if you're local, come on. And if you're not and you want to come hang out, get a full day of healing, get some awesome conversation going some validation education empowerment the journey of a spouse is the topic of this workshop we've even got couples coming yep we do ask though if you are a couple that's coming that one that the person the substance abuser is in recovery yes you have to be removed from the substance consider yourself someone who is in recovery actively working some kind of a program whatever that means don't really care just some kind of a program right right right. something something look to bump up your recovery journey as well yeah you will gain a ton through learning about the spouse's journey, how to honor your spouse, strengthen your marriage. If you're someone who is not in a relationship, this is designed for you. This is designed for you. This is the journey of a spouse. We will validate you. We will educate you. We will empower you. It's going to be amazing. Cannot wait. The following day, June 9th on Sunday morning, we are going to have a meetup completely free. Come and hang out. Kids are, yeah, kids are welcome. We'll have our kids babysitting. (laughs) They don't know that. They don't know this yet. (laughs) It's going to be at a park uh, here in town in McKinney. Open, we'll have some coffee, probably some donuts or something like that, some goodies. We're just going to hang out and talk. We've got plenty of time booked, so stop by whenever. You won't eat donuts. You're saying I'm not going to eat a donut? No. You want to bet? <laughs> I'll eat five donuts. <laughs> I love donuts. What are you talking about? Try noon. to eat clean. Try to fast, but I will make an exception hanging out with some wheelies. Okay. Coffee and donuts. Get me going on a sugar rush. It's going to be amazing, though. So we've got a little bit of time here left, a few weeks. If you've been on the fence about it, what are you waiting for? Come on, book it. Come on, come see us. Come hang out. It's going to be greatness. Yeah. We've also still got our course out there. Yeah. Independently Strong is out there. Um, it is the only thing of its kind that I'm aware of, that you're aware of. No one's come to us and said, hey, did you know this other thing is out there? It is the only thing that I'm aware of that is out there that is designed for the journey of a partner or a spouse through the addiction recovery process. We take things differently than traditional methods like 12-step programs. Um, we really hit this thing from um, therapy-informed, science-informed uh, perspective. I mean, this is it uses social learning theory. Uh, we've got a professionally licensed therapist that is a partner with us in the course, so it's not just us two goons talking about things. This comes from our lived Call ex- yourself a goon, not me. Okay, you're right. I should only speak for myself here. From one goon and one beautiful woman <laughs> and Dr. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> so it's lived experience of people who have been there before, backed by science and research to get you what you need. It is robust. It is not something you're going to finish in a weekend. Uh, you get your money's worth. And right now you can get 75% off using the code wheelies 75 that's wheelies with an S at the end, 75. Yes. What else am I missing? Oh, we have stickers on our website. We don't ever talk about the stickers. We've got all, yeah, we've got a bunch of like we've stickers got a lot for of water stickers. bottles, laptop, whatever you want to stick it on, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. Yep. And some new stuff in the works that I'm going to stop talking about until I get it finally done. Yeah, we're not talking about that. I think you keep jinxing it because you keep talking about it. Just need to do it. Yes. Take my own advice for once, you know? Yeah. We've got rocks. Oh, yeah, the recovery rocks. Recovery rocks. These are really cool. Uh, Several people have picked these up. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of people in recovery that listen. And this episode in particular is going to be, in some ways, about honoring the journey of a spouse or partner. Mm -hmm. I know that you got a lot of opinions about this. I can't wait to share. It's not about honoring that. This is about (laughs) something totally different. What are you talking about? It will come up. It's a theme that will come up, right? Okay. When I was going, so I I got sobered in a 12-step and then uh, in 12-step, programs for varying lengths of sobriety you're given like either like a, a keychain na does keychains aa does coins there's probably some other things out there as well but yeah i was given like a coin for three six nine months year 
I get one every year, but I remember coming home with my year chip and you're like, what about cool. me? Cool, man. Good job. Whatever. It's awesome. I don't think that's Happy what happened. For you. No, it wasn't. But there was a, definitely a sense of like, damn, what about me? Like, mm-hmm. uh, this is kind of like both of us that went through this with a lot of sacrifices that you made. So we created this rock on the back of it. It says, thank you for being my rock. And on the front, it's got the two full logo. It's a really, really cool gift. If you're someone who's working through recovery right now, if you are a couple that listens or someone in recovery that listens and you want to find a cool way, unique way to honor their journey, check it out over at twofo.com. That's where you can also find information on the workshop, on the course, all the above. We don't discuss it a lot, but we do, we do one-on-ones. We do um, relationship rebuilding. Um, we're not licensed therapists. Don't get the wrong idea. Like you're not going to get licensed therapy you're going to get lived experience from two people that have been there before yep talk about what we did Mm -hmm. uh, what could probably help you yeah you can check that out there as well yeah Uh, that's all i've got you take it from here all right so this (laughs) let's get on to the topic of the episode (laughs) all right so this is wheelie requested super awesome wheelie all of you wheelies are awesome but um this is about strategies for dealing with when a partner's recovery journey is at a different place than your own so you might feel like your partner is moving faster than you are in your recovery journey i have a lot to say on this we have experience here so i'm going to talk about why we may feel slower and then how you can manage this awesome let's get into it this is this is a topic that it almost seems like this is almost one of those like those things that you don't really know until you get into it. Yes. You want you don't know until you get into it. You kind of have to live through it to actually understand what what you're going to go through and how it might feel. This was the theme in our relationship that first was it the first year you think or was it after that? I think it was a few years after you got sober. It's really crazy and just quickly here, like my, when you, when you brought this topic up or whenever the, you know, our awesome wheelie brought this topic up, I remember this at some point, like our entire lives, you were so far ahead of me Mm -hmm. when it came to responsibility, when it came to drive, when it came to ambition, all these things. I mean, I talked a lot, but I never actually did anything. You were by far the responsible one. And then in recovery, it's like you're selfish as can be in recovery because you're just focused on, it's just, therapy or meetings or strategies or whatever, right? Just working on yourself. And you get to a point where you catch up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And then at some point you learn enough to where like, you're, you're pretty useful. Like you've got a lot of life skills now, but spouses weren't awarded that time. And you guys are looking at us like, who are you Mm -hmm. (laughs) to tell me (laughs) what I should be doing? Yeah. Like I was picking you up off the floor a year ago. Yes. You know? Yeah. And then you're kind of coming out of, out of survival mode too. So things are starting to unravel differently because when you're in these relationships during active addiction, both parties are kind of in denial, you know, going through it. And, um, I mean, I was saying you in active addiction was in denial. I was too. So whenever you got sober, it was like, all right, everything's going to be fixed, but that's not what happened. You know, it all just caught up to us. So I'm going to just go down a few points first to talk about why we may feel like our recovery journey is slower in the beginning. And number one is going to be that, um, they may be able to go away from reality for at least a month to work on themselves. And I'm talking about the active addict who's able to actually go to a treatment center for a long period of time to get away from reality and focus just on themselves and removing the substance. We don't get that opportunity. There's nothing for like for us. We have to deal with reality all the time. We have to, during active addiction, we had to deal with it. And then whenever you went to treatment, we had to deal with it. And when you come out, we have to deal with it. Um, you're distracted by you right now. You look really cute. Look really, really cute. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, you look really pretty. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm listening, no doubt, but I'm like, she looks really cute but right now. But sometimes whenever you give that look, it's like, he's not really listening to me or he's just trying I heard to understand it, I heard, whatever no, I was saying. I heard every word you said. <laughs> okay. Well, that was point one. Yeah. So when someone goes away for treatment, like a lot of times it's a really exciting thing for the family because it's like, this is the first step on the journey of healing. Like for them to get away and get clean, like physically clean. Mm-hmm. And I think that that excitement wears off fairly quickly because you get hit with the reality of taking care of a household, taking care of finances, 
still working your job, if you've got children at home, mm-hmm. dealing with that, dealing with, you know, if you've got little ones like changing diapers, you're worrying about feeding times or maybe you're breastfeeding, like it is hectic. Mm-hmm. It is beyond hectic. Like it is so much more than one person should have to shoulder, like the burden of and the responsibility of. And we get away for 30 days to these country club type places. Uh-huh. You got masseuses, acupuncture, you've got therapy, riding. Yeah, equine therapy, you've got fishing, golf, all kinds of stuff with the focus that you're going to sit here and you're going to work on yourself and you're going to get your stuff figured out. And it doesn't take long at all for you guys to kind of see that and go, wait a second, mm-hmm. you're doing, you're doing what? Like you'll talk to us on the phone. Like you did what today? All right. Well, I got thrown Must up. Be nice. On. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But you're right. Like we're we are afforded that time in early recovery. A lot of times, if you go to treatment or something like that, to do nothing but focus on you. Yeah. You get away in a stale, quiet environment, away from everything that is responsibility. Like my pla- the place I was at, didn't even allow email or anything. Like you, unless you had special exception, you couldn't even work. Mm-hmm. Like you were just you were out. That yeah. was it. You were detached from reality. You got one 10 minute phone call a day. You could read a newspaper, but we weren't allowed to have TV, no cell phones, no nothing like that. No internet access, really. I mean, it was... I know you were pissed because you couldn't have coffee. Coffee yet, was the thing. I was at home with our child, and I couldn't go to our regular home because I was too scared to be there without you since you owed people money. Yeah. And you were bitching about coffee. <laughs> How'd that make you feel? <laughs> How does it sound like it made me feel? <laughs> <laughs> not great. Not okay, great. I know that it's necessary. I know that it's necessary to get away. I know that you have to completely rewire your brain. I had a lot of patience for you, but this is where I'm, I'm just, I understand why it's frustrating for us too. Like I can be grateful that you're sober, but also be pissed off that you had to do that. You got to do that stuff. And I didn't get that opportunity. You have every right to be resentful to some degree about that and yeah. upset and like that's there's nothing fair about that there's no. nothing right about that that sucks that sucks and like that we've we've talked about this pretty sure several times at this point about like it's a it's a horrible thing to have to ask somebody after all that they've dealt with when someone's in active addiction to ask for still more patience and like even doubling down on it like this is this is going to require more sacrifice. Yeah. And I'm just talking about the 30 days of treatment right now. I haven't moved on to the next point. Yeah. The 30 days alone is tough. Yeah. We were pretty optimistic from what I recall when I was in treatment though. Yes, we were. Like, we were. Wh- I remember when I first came to see you and you were walking out and I recognized old Matt. It was the face that I recognized. I had the way that you were walking and the way that you smiled, the way that your face looked. It's like I knew then, I knew that you were coming back because I, I recognized you from before you were even in active addiction. That's what it reminded me of, like almost high school. It was crazy. But yeah, I, I knew that whenever you were in, there, were in there, I still felt like, okay, this, this, this could work. This could work. You, you did stay with your mom. Mm-hmm. Shout out Susan. She's amazing. <sighs> Amazing, amazing. But without that, and a lot of people don't get that kind of opportunity. Like maybe they've moved out of state and they're just nowhere near family or support systems. Yeah. Like they are all alone. Yeah. All alone. That's hard. That. Yeah. I was very grateful that I had my parents support. They took me in and they helped me. Yeah. Without that, I'm, I just don't know how anyone does this. And if you've, if you've done that, like major props, big shout out, all respect. Right. But I was still working and I was still having to worry about funds and I was still having to do, you know, run the house, run run everyday stuff, take care of our child who's nine months old. Like I was doing all of these things. I didn't have time to focus on me. I didn't get to like, what do you mean me? I don't, I don't have time for this. I have to hold down the fort because he has to go away. So then you come home. So this is going to be part two or point two is that you're told to be selfish in recovery. So you have to go all in when you get home out out of treatment. You find a sponsor. You go to multiple meetings, which was 90 meetings in 90 days. You had IOP, which you went for 90 days, right? 
and it like you went ham the first couple of weeks. They, it's a tapered program. It's like five days a week, yes. four days a week, three days a week. Then it's like two days a week. And I went one day a week, I think. Like there was one evening that I would go with you for mm-hmm. the family program. So I would have to find somebody to watch our kid during that time to be able to be there with you. But all the other time I was working, holding down the fort, doing all these things, while you still had to go through all of these other meetings and new routines and IOP and trying to work on your recovery 100% that had to come first. So I was still, so 90 days plus the 30 days, you had all that time to focus on you while I had no time to focus on me. And I get that opportunity again, because I had a little one. And I think a lot of spouses run into this where it's like, you get to go hard on your recovery. I can't do the same because somebody has to take care of the life that we've we've tried to build together. I really, really took that for granted too. Like very much took it for granted. Um, like we, you and I have talked about this in depth, not just on like in, in talking about, hey, what are we going to talk about on the show or something that comes up the community? Like we've we've talked about this to some degree where it's just. I was told to be selfish and in my mind I thought I was doing the right thing and I thought that like you were on board with all this as well like this is just the way it is and you just took it in stride and which I was and I did and I but I took that for granted like really 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 I was an incredibly selfish person in active addiction and I was very selfish in early recovery too and it just sort of in my like child brain it just never occurred to me like how things got done How does stuff get done around here? It just, it never really even occurred to me. And that's an embarrassing thing to say, but I think a lot of people feel that way. I think you're right. And this is because they don't have have. to do it. They've never been forced to. We have no choice to do it. It's survival for us because nobody else is going to take care of it. No one else is going to take care of it. So who has to do it? The one who is capable of doing it. The responsible one. Right. Which. That sucks, you know, because you want a partner who's equal. You marry somebody and you think, okay, we're going to build this together. It just, it's not how it works when it comes with addiction and recovery. No, you end up taking on so many other jobs that you never asked for. Right, right. So many other jobs. Right. So it's interesting when people are like, you know, oh, you can't enable them. You can't, you know, do things for them. Um, But sometimes there are things that we have to do for our partners because it would affect us. So... Mortgage doesn't get paid. Right. Like now you're out of a house too. Right. Right. Bills aren't getting paid. Okay. Like, well, we don't have lights. Like, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, can't I, cook I, dinner. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I still have to take care of that. Yeah. We need money for somebody groceries. has to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, yeah, it's, it's, you can't just blanket everything and say that's enabling behavior. Right. It's nuanced. Like, let's be real. Like, yes, for sure. But I am a big believer in like, do, don't do for others what they can do for themselves. But I understand. Like that set if up appointments and yeah, things like that. Make lunch. Right. Or, Make your lunches, whatever. Some people you, do your laundry. I still do your laundry, but that's because I'm home. So <laughs> I help on laundry. I help on laundry. But this is how it works with our dynamics. We, we actually have, it, it works really well for us. The different things that are different responsibilities or whatnot. But I just don't, I don't do too much for you because I know that it's, you're, you're a grown ass man you know, be one and you are, that's awesome. But it took a long time to get there. Very long time. Yeah. I was a late bloomer. Well, yeah. Failure to launch, they call it. But like in early recovery, you're taught to be selfish. And I had a lot of patience for that. Um, but it didn't catch up to me until later on. So the next point that I wanted to talk about is that whenever you were in active addiction, you didn't have to really question your reality because you were completely, you know, blacked out. You didn't have somebody lying to you all the time. Um, you were, you get to forget about everything that was happening while we have to remember everything. So when you're in recovery, it's just easy for you to say, Oh, I don't even remember that. I don't even remember that. It's like, no, but we remember that. We remember that we need to heal from that. We need you to hold space for us to heal from that. So that's just another thing as to why it's easier for you to recover on one side than it is for us because we've had to remember so much more. Yeah. That's why recovery and sobriety is so hard because Mm -hmm. you feel and remember everything. Mm -hmm. This is what you guys have been doing the entire time Mm -hmm. for a a chunk of my life. Like a third of my life. It is fuzzy. I mean, fuzzy. I just wasn't present. I mean, even if I wasn't completely smashed or something, I had something in my body that was not allowing me to experience reality in the fullest sense. And that meant a stressful day at work. That meant being overloaded with things to do at home. 
that meant relationship problems between me and you that meant burdens of having young children around all that stuff. I felt to a much lesser degree than you did because I, my central nervous system was impaired. I simply couldn't take that information in. I just didn't feel it. I was numb. Yeah. But you felt every bit of it, man. Right. Every last bit of it. Yeah. Which is why sobriety sucks. Like everyone will tell you, you're going to feel so much better when you get sober. You're right. You're going to feel anger better, depression better, sadness better, anxiety better, fear better, anger, all of it. You feel for the first time in a very long time, which is why it's so difficult. This is what your spouse has been feeling the entire time. Mm Mm-hmm. The whole freaking time. They've gone through every bit of this. Yeah. And that stuff leaves scars and that stuff has to be worked through. You got to go in there in the muck and start to piece it out. You have to work through it. You guys have a lot more of that in a, in, in, in a large sense than we do because like truly there were things that like, fights we had had or things I had gone through that was just super fuzzy. I wasn't really there. I was there, but I wasn't really there. You yeah, know? yeah. 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 You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. All right, and this last point as to why your partner's recovery journey might seem like it's you're they're ahead of you is that there aren't as many resources out there for us for support. You know, the all those who have struggled with addiction have resources everywhere. Everywhere. You can go online, you can go down the street, you can call up so many people who are there to support you and we are pretty much the forgotten ones. Like, of course, there are support groups. There are, you know, you might have some family members, but sometimes family members can't and friends aren't going to be there for you because they don't understand what you're dealing with. They've never been in your position, so they might judge you a little bit more. Yeah, sometimes they've been pushed away too because yeah. they don't know why you stay and they're just done hearing about right, it. Right, which those, we'll have an episode on that because that's been requested a few times. Um. But when there aren't as many resources for us, it's really hard for us to heal and recover because we don't know where to turn. We don't know what's wrong with us. We don't know what the deal is, you know? Like we, we go to therapy once a week and that's, that's about it. That's all we have. We're not able to get away for 30 days and go to programs. They do have um, intense and out, intensive outpatient programs for people who are struggling with mental health issues, which I think is pretty amazing. Yeah. They have PHPs and ILPs for that. Yes. Yes. Um, but still nothing specific for this. I talked to a treatment center today. Um, it was really cool. They're, they specialize in trauma, like simply trauma. They treat addiction, but what they really treat is trauma and underlying issues, which I thought was kind of cool. And not everyone in those treatment centers is even an addict. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was very really interesting. Like people who are just dealing with depression, suicidal ideation, um, people who are just struggling and pretty interesting. Yeah. But getting the nuts and bolts of it, who pays for this insurance isn't really thrilled to pay for it. Right. Because they look at someone like a spouse who's dealt with all this stuff and they're like, well, I mean, I don't know. You just, you got some issues. Go to therapy. Right. Like what, what do you need to get away for? Yeah. And that's just how, that's how it works right now. Like if we have it, our, like we've, we've said this before, but before we leave this planet, we will have changed that. Yep. Completely changed that. Like we want to have, our dream one day is to have a ranch. A ranch. A treatment facility for partners spouses. and spouses. And maybe even a joint compound where everyone, the entire family can come. Yes. And get treatment. Yeah. Get healing. Like mm-hmm. Work through this stuff collaboratively. Mm-hmm. That would be amazing. That's our goal. That would be amazing. It's a dream. It's going to happen one day. Yes. We'll get it funded somehow. Yep. For sure. If you all know any billionaires, uh, let me know. <laughs> I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So I remember that you came home. I just want to talk about our experience real quick is that you came home from treatment and you worked really hard and everything that we went through came out in my own mental health, you know, my anxiety, the panic, depression. Um, and I remember that I felt so much shame for not being able to hold myself together after you had been in recovery for four years or whatnot and you were holding it all together and doing awesome and I'm like I felt shame I felt like well why can't I get my shit together it's like I used to be the strong one I'm the one that held us together for so long why is this happening now and then you tried to push your recovery talk on me and it didn't fully work because I still questioned a lot of the stuff you know it just wasn't working for me I needed to do something else keep that 12 step bullshit to yourself I ain't (laughs) hearing that no I learned a lot from it. I remember I told you that a lot of things within AA, like people in life could 
truly benefit from. Some of the principles in there are just universal. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But there were also some things where I was like, eh, no, that doesn't apply here and I'm going to fight it and I'm going to question it and I'm going to figure this out on my own and I did. That's fair. Um, But I just, I kept asking, you know, like how did this happen and how is he the more stable person now? And that, that was hard for me. That was hard because I spent so much time pushing our relationship and trying to be the better person and trying to like not party so much because I have to go to work. You know, I, I sacrificed a lot of my young adulthood to try to keep us going. So whenever this happened, I'm like, what the fuck happened? What happened? That was a tough time. That was a really tough time. Yes. The darkest time we've ever had as a couple. Yeah. And I, I, I can't compare the two, but I felt helpless watching you go through that and like trying to work you through it. I remember we would spend, I would spend basically all day long talking you off a cliff. Yep. And then the next, and you, we would, we would get there and then the next morning you would wake up and it starts all over. Yeah. It must be exactly how it feels dealing with someone in active addiction Mm -hmm. when I was going through this where, yeah, oh, we, we can talk about our hopes and dreams about eating better and exercising and doing all the healthy things a person's supposed to do. And then they wake up the next morning. And it's like, I'm going to use, I can't even stop myself. Right. You know, it was just, it was horrible. Yeah. And yeah. I do remember you being beyond frustrated with yourself. Yes. That you couldn't figure this out and why you couldn't just move past it. And all this stuff that had happened because you, you were never given permission that it's okay to feel that way mm-hmm. by me or anyone else. Like we didn't know any better. Um, there was nothing like this, like what we have here right. with the show, like Tufo wasn't around. There wasn't anyone telling you, you can feel this way. You, you'll be resentful. That's normal. That's okay. Yeah. It's really tough. Yeah. You know? I was not validated at all. And I think that's where a lot of my shame was coming in too, because I was like, I, I'm not supposed to feel like this. You know, I felt like I was wrong for feeling the way that I felt. So I kept fighting it. And when you fight it, it just gets worse. It's better to feel it, acknowledge it, learn from it you know, get help for it and then you can process it better. Yeah. Cause on one hand you're incredibly grateful that things are the way they are. Absolutely. Things are better. Yes. But it doesn't feel like you think it would Mm-mm. certainly. And we talk about this all the time that emotions buried alive, never die. That stuff has got to be drug up and dealt with at some point. Like it'll turn into a zombie. It'll come out and haunt you in your sleep. Even mm-hmm. it will come back and you dealt with that really bad really freaking bad that's when the therapy started and and, and all that stuff and your journey really started but even then like we didn't know what we know now back then like we started to identify it but we didn't know what we knew then like back then we didn't know that this was going to be a a journey of your own like as much as i was ever taught and i was very well like i was well versed in recovery i was well versed in family treatment and all this stuff like they told us about what this looks like and it wasn't the truth. Like it was, if anything, it was a lie. You will get sober. Everything will be fine. That's what they told me. That's what they told you too. Did they? Yeah. Remember the family weekends? Yeah. Like they were like, you're going to write a letter to the addiction. You're going to confront this stuff. You're going to address it right here, right now. We're going to hug and kiss and everything's going to be fine. We're talking about decades of damage. It doesn't get fixed in a family weekend. Right. It doesn't get fixed in like even a three or four day retreat. You yeah. know, it's, it's serious issues. That's ongoing mm-hmm. like care Yeah, that requires therapy over time a long and years. Period of time. Did you ever get pulled aside and said like, you need to start seeing a therapist on a regular basis? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, no. no one told me this about this, <laughs> any of this either. Like, no. like the, the cessation of the substance was going to, what was going to fix all this. Yeah. And that's just not true. Yeah. And we've come to find that in thousands of people that we know that we've come across people in the community, people on social media like that's the experience that's a typical experience Mm -hmm. like i don't know anyone that's actually made it out to the other side and hasn't dealt with anything no one but they tell you that i think and i think i know why i I know why too right it's almost one of those ignorance is bliss type things and you kind of just have to go through it and deal with it and then figure it out when you get there is that about right? Like you'll cross that bridge when you get there? I think that's exactly what it is. Which I understand, but I'm also at a point now in our life where I'm just like, I want to be prepared. And I think that's what we do for people um, is help them be prepared for what could happen instead of being 
not delusional, but instead of being ignorant in what this really entails. Because you, you, if you have children and stuff, you need to know about these things. You need to know how it affects you. You need to know how it affects your family. It's important. Yeah. If, if someone walked into a treatment center and a family weekend or whatever, it's like you told them, hey, everything's going to be really good for a little bit. And then it's all going to, sh- shit's going to hit the fan and it's all going to fall apart all over again. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, what's the point? What's the point of any of this, man? This is, this is bunk. Y'all need to fix this shit. Like, I'm not coming back here. Mm-hmm. We're going to go somewhere else. If you heard that day one, it's like, it's like whenever you go buy a, like, like a fancy car, like they don't tell you what maintenance costs on that damn thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. leave this lot with right. the nicest car ever. It's going to smell good. It's going to be fast and it's going to be fun. That's kind of what they tell you. Yeah. But then you have your first oil change. You get the bill for six grand. You're like, wait a second. You take this shit back. That's crazy. You're yeah. You're mine, man. Yeah. It's sort of like that, I guess. Yeah, I get it. And I think there's a gray area here. Like you can do in between, you know, I think it's important. Like we prepare people, but it doesn't mean that this is going to specifically happen to you. Yeah. But it's a possibility. So be prepared. For sure. All right. So I want to talk about how to manage this. So if you feel like you're in a relationship and your partner is ahead of you in their recovery, how do you manage it? Um, so for us, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go down the list real quick. I'm, let me say I had a lot of patience for you. Um, but in here you need to have a lot of patience for yourself. You know, if I could go back in time, I wish that I could have, started my healing process sooner than what I did. I don't know if I would have been able to do that though, because I had responsibilities. You were going in so hard. How was I going to be able to go in as well with recovery? Both of us can't go in a hundred percent on recovery. Someone has to give, like there has to be sacrifices. That sucks. This sucks. It sucks. It just sucks. It's BS. It's but, BS. You're right. But I can have you know, both thoughts, you know, at two once. thoughts, two at, thoughts once. at once is that I, I, I'm grateful that I did have patience and we got through it, but also it sucked that I was not putting myself first at all. Like it caught up to me. We had this conversation for, for listeners. Uh, we were, we were doing sort of like a, uh, we, a, a preview, like we were trying pre-show to show stuff, yeah, like yeah, all yeah. of our prep and whatnot. Prep. We were talking about this and Paige is getting like really heated and really fired up. Mm-hmm. And the, I know exactly why you feel the way you feel. And if I were you, I would feel the exact same way. And you're not wrong for feeling that way. But the result of all that patience is that it did work out. So I asked you the question, if you had to go back in time, would you do it again? And you just kind of looked at me like, I don't know. But we were young. We had time. I'm grateful for where we are right now. I think that it's, we have an amazing marriage and I'm so proud of what we've gone through. Like I'm grateful that we went through shit so that we can do what we do today. Like we've learned from it. I think that's amazing and it's beautiful in itself that we're able to help others based on our experience, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I wouldn't want my daughter to go through that. I'll tell you that. There's a way to do it that I think could soften your experience quite a bit, Mm -hmm. quite a bit because I was told get out, Go be, you got to be selfish in recovery, man. You need to get out of here. You need to focus on recovery. You need to buckle down. You need to get basically obsessed with this. I wasn't really taught about balance so much. Like it, maybe it was mentioned here or there, but balance is something I've yet to achieve in life. I don't know if I'll ever really achieve it in life. Like it's just balance to me is just a juggling act of when something is spilling over here, you go take care of that problem. And then you, by the time you get back to the middle, it's spilling on the other side. And it's like, you're always constantly juggling priorities, just trying to stay afloat. But in recovery, they were like, don't worry about anything, but your recovery. This is what effective addiction treatment looks like. You have to really focus on this. You have to get obsessed with it. You have to go all in. You have to rewire that brain. Yeah. And in order to do that, it requires a lot of time spent thinking and acting in recovery. I mean, you have to get involved. You have to do this stuff on a daily basis. It has to be at the forefront of your mind. You're reading about it. You're talking about it. You're doing something with it. It's just non freaking stop. And then we pick up hobbies. Everyone loves the hobbies we pick up in sobriety. (laughs) Man, the hobbies it's, it's, we were talking about this before the show too. It's tough. Like, um, when it comes to addiction recovery, like, well, in treatment centers, for instance, if you wonder why they have all these fun activities, part of 
part of the battle in, in early recovery is just staying busy. It's staying busy because when we get bored, we make really bad decisions. We're like Australian shepherds. We had one of these things one time, an Australian shepherd. We're not going to talk about him. If Paige is not a fan of this dog. But this dog was beyond smart and he was driven and he was energetic. And if you didn't give him a job, he was going to find one and you were not going to like the job that he picked. It was usually chewing up your drywall, digging a hole, tearing something up. And that's kind of how we are. If you don't give me a job, if I don't have purpose, if I'm not distracted to some degree, I will go to what I know that's best. That's not healthy either though. You have to learn how to be bored. I was raised to learn how to be bored. It was an important thing in my household of like, no, it's okay to be bored. Be bored. You're not hungry. You're bored. It's okay. You need to sit in that. That's about being present. We have to learn to be in that, that, that moment because we can't, we're humans. We can't constantly have something going on a hundred percent all the time. Like that's not healthy either. I agree with you. Early on though, <laughs> early on, if I, I know for me anyway, if I would have been without purpose for too long, the, the, the little thought starts to itch in my brain and eventually it becomes an obsession. And that's how a lot of people relapse. I understand. I know that boredom does cause that, I but get you're that. right in part of recovery. Like when like long term, it's about learning to be present and learning to be bored. I remember the first time I was bored. I remember <laughs> called a friend in recovery. I'm like, I just feel like anxious. And I just, he's like, it's called boredom. That's called serenity, dude. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. This is what it's like when you don't have any problems anymore and you can just sit and be. And I was like, oh, like this is what normal people do. You can just sit. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can do that. You should do that. That's important. You need to rest too. Because I was just go, 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 go. Motor, yeah. motor, 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 motor. Yeah. In the very beginning, I think. I encourage people like find something, do something, get involved with a group of people, change, change your people, places and things. I agree. We have to do that too. Be distracted in some way. But we can't do all of that. We still have responsibilities. I know it sucks. We still have children. We still have things that we have to deal with. We still have to make lunches. We still have to do bedtime. We have to do all of these things while you're going to the gym, you know, like it's just like, come on. What I advocate for now, after having been through it and seeing where I made errors, like the first year I didn't do any of those things. I got my, what'd you say? Right, my, I said you that your hobby was? was eating candy. Yeah, that was my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> my hobby was how many different candy bars could I eat in a week? Mm -hmm. You know, putting like. Piling up your drawer. Putting uh, three musketeers between two nutter butters to see what it tastes like. Yes. And just, yeah, just going hard. But uh, I started to exercise after about a year sober. And that quickly became problematic because I was working out and it was taking time from the family. And well, you, I had a newborn um, and we had a toddler. You had one? Yes, I had a newborn and a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be related to me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, well, I was I had to breastfeed or I breastfed our second yeah. one. So I had a lot of the responsibility. You didn't have much to do because it's not like you could feed him. You know, like I had you to didn't do pump everything. Or anything. No, I was, it was, it was all me. He basically I was, lived on that boom. He lived with me for a year. <laughs> like he was my responsibility and all of that. But it, but we still had our toddler that I needed help with more. And that was about the time that you had joined CrossFit and you had um, a community and you were gone a lot. And it was, I was starting to really feel it. The mental load was too much for me. And I was like, I need your help. So can you please try to figure out a different, way of doing this instead yeah. of taking your time away from the family. Yeah. And so with recovery and with my hobbies as well, I started to do these things when it didn't affect other people's schedules. Yes. So I worked, I was at the gym at five before anyone was awake mm -hmm. and I was going to meetings at lunchtime. I would sacrifice my lunch and eat at my desk and go to a meeting instead. So effectively it wasn't changing the amount of hours that I was available for the family. Right. But again, I wouldn't be able to work on myself. You still couldn't. There's no because way. I took both those because slots. Because you, yeah, you took. And those then slots. in the evenings, it's like, yeah, you know, right. Like, um, what were we gonna do? Yeah. And I, th I don't think that you were in a place where you felt. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you were in a place then where you felt um, like you could. Like yeah. you still felt guilty for taking time to yourself oh yeah is that right yes absolutely like i, I don't I'm, even think it's something you would have done like, i would have had to force it upon you mm -hmm. 
it was tough. It was a really tough time. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I'm going to talk about how to manage it. I'm going to get back to this. So the first thing that I suggest doing is giving yourself grace, patience, and lots of self-love because you've been through a lot. Um, so if your recovery is a lot slower than you want, give yourself grace and just be patient with yourself. You're still doing what you need to do. You know, you may not be able to do as much as your partner is doing, but you're still doing something for yourself. And that's important. Acknowledge it. What about for people where their partner is not in recovery, not interested, and they're trying to recover with someone who's not interested in recovery? Well, that's really difficult, but you still can work on yourself. When it comes to that grace piece, I think it may be even more important. Absolutely. Yeah. There's something to be said about that. I think, I don't know, the the journey of spouse, the journey of someone who's who's essentially shouldered the burden of a family, of a household, of a relationship. There's just so much that goes into that. And so often, like I, I talk to these people all the time, they feel responsible and they feel like they could have done something different or they could have managed it better. And it's like, you were some of the strongest people that I've ever come across. Like I, I look up to every single one of you. I admire you so much. You have no idea. Like you were my heroes. Like, these people that I meet, it's just incredible. And like you were at the top of that list of people who were just absolutely amazing. And for them to feel bad about themselves, it just breaks my heart to feel like they're not far enough along. It's like, do you realize what you've been through? Yeah. Like you've got to give yourself some grace, give yourself some patience. Mm -hmm. Like you've done so much. Like you, you've accomplished more in this period of time that you've happened to deal with this than most people do in a lifetime. Like yeah. you have, you have that story about the single mother who raised a family who worked three, four jobs. Like I've met those women. I know those people. They yeah. are out there doing this every day. They're probably listening to this show right now. Like we see you. Please give yourself some grace. Yes. Like, it is okay that you're not as far along as you want to be, but you're you're listening to this right now, right? You're probably in the community. You're watching our videos. Like you are you are getting there. You're yeah. getting started, you're getting focused. And it's a little by slow process. It's a little by slow process. Like you'd be the first to say, like it took years. Yeah. Like this isn't something you fix in a month or three. No. You, you'll you'll make progress, no doubt. Yes. But it ain't gonna be fixed. No. I'll say like within every three months is probably when you're going to notice different layers coming apart a little bit more. And sometimes you'll go backwards, which is totally part Not of the process Not always linear. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's life. And you're going to have your own version of a relapse at some point. Yes, for sure. Yep. All right. So the second one is going to be recognize that you may feel like you're behind, but you're actually right on track. So it's okay to feel the way that you're feeling, but you're exactly where you need to be. Like Matt was saying, if you're listening to this, you're exactly where you need to be. You're on track. Be proud of that. Acknowledge that. That's important. Progress is relative. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably a crude example of this, but a, a lot of people say, you know, like my husband's really great. Like he's, he's awesome. It's just when he drinks that he sucks, that he's mean, that he's terrible. Or they'll say today was a really good day. It's like, well, that's relative. It's good relative to what? Relative that he didn't scream or get abusive or throw things or pass out on the floor or ruin a party or something like that. Like this is similar to that. Like it's relative. Like you can look at where you are today. Let's say you've been listening to the show for even two weeks. Mm -hmm. Where were you two weeks ago? Like we are further along. Yes. That is progress. Yeah, exactly. That is progress. Mm -hmm. Every time you listen to something, every time you invest a little bit of time in yourself, and learning about this stuff, you are growing, you yeah. are learning, and that should be celebrated. Like that's, that's, that's progress. That's what progress is. Yeah. It just sucks because <laughs> you just want to get to the other side of it. Cause it's so effing painful. Mm -hmm. It's so painful. I just want this to be over. I want this to be done. I want something to happen and make this shit go away. I've been doing this for too long, but you're right where you need to be Yeah. right where you need to be. Yep. The next one is to stay consistent in your own journey, which these all kind of go together, but I wanted to break them up a little bit. Staying consistent is just keep learning, keep listening, keep reading, keep doing things, keep going to therapy, keep practicing self-care, and you're going to be bumping it up oh, like just a little bit more each time. Just stay consistent. If you keep, if you drop it, 
over and over again, it's going to be more difficult to keep going. Like, of course you're going to drop it sometimes, but staying consistent is what's going to help you push forward. Sort of like weight loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just because you ate cake today doesn't mean the diet's a failure. Yeah. Just get back on. Right. That's all you have to do. Just, just get back on. Yeah. Like rationally think about it. Like, yeah. Like, oh, I forgot to journal today. Oh, I didn't meditate today. Oh, it's, I didn't. It's not all or nothing. No, it's not. I mean, I do encourage you to try to do something every single day for yourself. Something every day. Um, but staying consistent is going to be key. Addiction recovery is no different. Yeah. You know, you're not going to make a meeting every single day. You're not going to uh, get your mind right every single day. You're not going to get your breath work done every single day. You don't stop. And like anytime you're successful at anything, it's just that you're just the most stubborn and consistent. That's it. It's not the greatest person who got an A every single day. It's the guy that consistently delivered B's. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about baseball. Like we were talking about this the other day. It's why it's my favorite sport in the world. Because it's the only sport where you can fail seven out of 10 times and make the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's just about who's the most consistent. That's all the game cares about. Mm -hmm. Someone who averages th three successes for every 10 tries is considered great. Yeah. There's just consistency. Just keep coming back. Keep being consistent. Keep delivering. Keep doing these things over a long enough period of time and you will get results. Yep. For sure. All right. The next one's really important. It's try not to compare. So try not to compare your recovery journey with your partner's recovery journey for the very reasons I said above, you know, y'all get a jump start at it. You're able to go all in. We don't have that ability. So try not to compare where you are on your journey. And it's going to be different. Like each thing, thing they're going to unravel differently. Something that your partner may be great at, you might be terrible at right now. But something that they may be terrible at right now, you might be great at. You know, that's something that you and I have always talked about is how your strengths are my weaknesses and vice versa. And yeah, that's why we kind like of... perfect compliments. Yes, yes. and But we, we try to balance each other out with that too. But there are just going to be some things that, that you just don't need to compare. Just try not to compare. Yeah, comparisons like the thief of thief of joy, they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. you can look at someone else's journey, but damn, they're so much further along. But yeah, you're right. We got a head start. Mm -hmm. um, we also have tons and tons of resources that are dedicated for us. And it's a there's a well worn path to recovery. And it's not just one path, there are several paths. I mean, you don't just have to work a twelve step program. There there are other ways to do it, you know. Some people find their own way, but it's there's there's still much more out there about the journey of someone through addiction recovery as opposed to some the journey of someone a spouse that's on the other side of it and it, that's different than someone who's just had a mental health journey like there are plenty of people out there who are like hey i've conquered anxiety and it's like anxiety is part of what you guys deal with but it's so much more than that mm -hmm. so much more than that it's loss of identity it's 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 disassociation it is just complete and utter like loss of values who am i what do i even like i hear that all the time like i don't even know what i believe in anymore i don't even know what my values are yep i hear that all the time like we're starting from zero from scratch we're not just talking about someone who gets anxious over emails or you know gets social anxiety like this is it's different than someone's just general mental health journey too so like it's tough to look at your progress and say am i winning or not like I don't know how do you compare that don't compare it to people that aren't walking your journey yeah but also don't compare it to me either because I've been doing this for a long time yeah that's another thing I wanted to point out is that if you are comparing your journey and your healing to where I am now it's it's not going to be the same because the substance has been removed for 11 years and I started my healing journey seven years ago so I have a lot of time under my belt with that great place to get support is in our community and if you don't know about it the tufo community on facebook the tiktok link's wonky right now yeah, i don't know what that's about I it think, has something to do with tiktok i think that they don't want people to they don't go want to us facebook. to go out of yeah that's what it is yeah i don't know go to our uh either our website or our instagram profile shortcut if communities are really really helpful to, yes we, we talked about not comparing um it's a non-judgmental place where no one's comparing 
whatsoever. Yeah. It is it is and it's all different levels. It's it is people like who have three thousand people in it together. Mm-hmm. In yes. it together, walking yes. one solid path of recovery, like a bunch of people just marching. Right, but they're all on at different levels within their journey, but it's all going to the same space. Yeah, but it's it and it like the non judgmental zone has been so incredible for people there. So also I kind of wanted to talk about the course right here for just a second. Okay. Um, that's another way to help bump up your recovery too, because it's very similar to what you guys deal with, with recovery. Like it is a program that is going to help you bump up your recovery much further than you would if you didn't have something. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, no, I think it's this is why we designed it yeah. for this very reason. Yep, like, how how do we expedite that process? Right, right, exactly. All right, so another way I want you, I really want you to think about your gratitude. I want you to have gratitude about where you are right now within your journey. Gratitude of what you've been through and how you were learning from it. You know, like I'm, I'm, gr- like I said earlier, I'm grateful for the crap that we went through because now I'm at, I'm where I'm at now. But if you're grateful within your journey, it just kind of helps you look at reality and where you are compared to where you were before. Yeah, gratitude can be used rightly. It can also be used to trick yourself into thinking that things aren't as bad as they really are. Yep. And that's not what we're talking about nope. here. It's not what we're talking about. We're not big on that. No. There's a time and a place for gratitude. I think this is the proper use of a gratitude list. Like there are times where you can be having the worst day ever and you can find gratitude no matter what. And I don't think it's always just like, um, I have a roof over my head. Like sometimes you can have a roof over your head and be incredibly miserable. Yeah. That's just because you have a roof over your head doesn't mean that your problems are fixed. Like you can have some much bigger issues where it's like, I would get rid of the roof and fix this other stuff, man. That would be, that'd be great. But on this journey of recovery for your, your recovery, your spouse's recovery, Finding those moments where you can look at the good, the bad, and especially the ugly and find a bright spot in that. Like you've talked about the things that we've been through and the things that I put you through, the things that you had to walk through made you who you are today. Mm -hmm. And in some ways you're grateful for them, Mm -hmm. which is crazy to say. Like I hear people share all the time. They'll say, they'll introduce themselves like I am a grateful alcoholic. And someone who's new hears that and they're like, what are you, a psychopath? You're grateful for this? You want to be here? Are you crazy? But that person has turned. They, they look at their identity now as someone who is would not have learned these things without that stuff. Mm-hmm. And there is gratitude to be had in that because you will come out of this so strong. Yes, but it's not necessarily that I'm grateful for the things we went through. I think I'm grateful for the tools that I learned during my healing journey and what I did with them. That right there. <laughs> Take, <laughs> can, taking your line. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I wanted to talk about gratitude. So the last thing is going to be super important because it's what really helped both of us on our recovery journey. And that is to talk to each other, be open, vulnerable, honest, like actually have conversations about where you are on your recovery journey without the fear of triggering your partner, because if you're both working on yourselves, you're going to be able to communicate a little bit better and you're going to be able to hear each other. And it's going to, it might take practice, but just be open, talk to each other, let them know where you are and how you feel. It helps. This is real talk though. This is really tough to do with someone who's in early recovery or someone who's still active. Because they don't, well, they, active, don't they don't communicate like that. No, I understand that, but I think that you want a partner. You talk to me about your healing journey all the time. You know, I think I should be able to talk about my healing. You should, and I'm not talking about like bringing up things from the past that harmed you. I'm talking about what you're learning and how you're applying it in your life. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm not talking about that. We can talk. Like, about, like I learned. We'll the have thing, a totally a different conversation on that. I mean, we actually help couples deal with that um, um, when they work with us and stuff. But this is actually like, what are you learning? What are you excited about? Just like your partner wants to come home and talk to you about their recovery. If I mean, I'm only assuming that they do. That's what you did. I would want to do the same. Like, oh, this is what I learned today. Check this out. Look at this book that I'm reading. You know, that's, that's just having conversations with your person. Yeah. And you're, you're essentially talking about the same stuff. 
Like, yeah. These are conversations you should be looking forward to having with somebody. Mine was more about just personal development. And that's what I really liked. That's what recovery is in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's yeah. personal development, you know? Yeah. But like, you know, look at this, what I'm reading. Look what I learned. Look at, uh, ooh, I've heard about this certain personality disorder. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> or you know? s- sending, s- sending me a reel or like a, yeah. a, a carousel yes, or something like yes. that. Yes. Like we talk about this stuff all the time, even though, I mean, this is part of our job, but we did it in early recovery in, in mine too. I mean, there were times where I would have therapy and I'm like, I don't. I don't want to talk to you about this right now because it, maybe we weren't in the best space then to discuss it and I could read the room or whatnot, but eventually it would come up and we would have conversations over it. Something that people in recovery struggle with big time. we talked about the, the, the guilt filter, how there's not one, how, or the validation that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Like earlier we were talking in the kitchen and you were talking about like, this is just bullshit. It's just bullshit that you get to do you get to go to a treatment center, you get to go pet horses, and I'm over here cleaning up puke and dealing with drug dealers who may or may not rob the house. I was cleaning up dog shit, actually. Yeah, peanut butter poop all over the floor, man. Yes. He just let it fly. Yeah, he did. Social anxiety or separation anxiety from the dog. There ain't nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night and stepping in cold peanut Oh my butter. God. Oh, that's, that's disgusting. Why would you even right say that? Right through but the, the toes. the smell was absolutely gross. But anyway, yeah. I was holding down the fort while you were going and doing all these fun things. But, and I was like, this must be fucking nice. But you were in the kitchen telling me like, it's bullshit. Yes, this I was is pissed. bullshit. I can't. <laughs> I, it's, it's just not right. And what was I saying? I know. I know. I you know. were. You were. You did not say anything like, well... I mean, you did. You were like, well, we're here now. I brought this up after, but, but I was saying just but you were over like, and over. I know. I know, I know that it I sucks. know. And it, it is. It is. But the point after that was like, but the patience that you displayed that I didn't deserve, that you found some way to muster is, I credit that to part of the reason that I'm here today. Yeah. I know that I had to give you that in order for us it, to but work. It's, but it sucks. Or for you to work. But yes, it does suck. It's bullshit. And it sucks. It's, it is. It's complete bullshit. You, ha- this is from me to anyone who listens, who's in recovery or is sober curious. Like you have to hold space for those kinds of conversations, yes, and those kinds do. of thoughts. They feel that way and you would too. And that is okay to say it sucks. Would you like it? <laughs> would you like it? Like seriously, think about that. I don't think that a lot of you would be able to handle the shit that we had to handle. I've, think about that. I think that most addicted people would leave you guys for much less. Mm hmm. You know? Oh yeah, I know that. Like yeah. Like you would have left me for half the stuff I did to you. We we heard someone say that on this show one time. Mm-hmm. Like you'd have Wait. left me for oh. half of it. Oh, saying that I'm saying that. To we you. heard a partner say this to someone yes. in recovery. Like yes. you'd have left me for half yes. the shit. I, that you I, did to well me. I said that about you yeah. too. I was like, you would have left me for half the shit that you did to me. And it's true. Like I don't I know you wouldn't have tolerated it. So think for a moment what it would take for you to have to make those sacrifices for you to have to get to that place in your mind where you're just carrying the weight with no one saying, congratulations, good job. Thank you. Just doing it while we're out there acting like idiots. Yeah. Like it's, you have to hold space for someone's emotions. We're not about even that. asking for a pat on the back. We just want somebody to, to, to be an equal partner and acknowledge the fact that it, there's a lot of mental, the, the load is in, intense we do a lot of stuff that y'all are not capable of doing an average mom out there with without this problem of addiction in the family yes yes. still carries an immense Mm -hmm. mental load the emotional labor and mental labor that goes along with just the things that women have to do every day Mm -hmm. it's massive yeah it's huge let your partner tell you it sucks it is okay it does suck it's not right they're not saying that you're a scumbag and i hate you and i wish i had just left they're just saying it sucks. They're just talking. They're just sharing their feelings about it. Allow space for that. Yep. That's going to be part of what we do in the workshop. Yep. There will be couples there and we're mm-hmm. going to have that exercise. Right. And I'm going to walk people through that and mm-hmm. you're going to get to sit there and you're going to hear these things. Mm-hmm. And some people maybe for the first time ever, and they're just going to have to sit there and hear that. Yeah. And someone's going to get to express how they actually feel mm-hmm. about what's going on. Not saying I hate you. I'm just saying it, it sucks. sucks. Exactly. And for you to validate that is the most powerful thing you can do. Yep. Just validate it. You don't have to sit there and argue with it or try to change the way they feel. Just validate it. Yeah. That is powerful. She obviously cares. She's still here. Right. You know? Right. Like she's already made her decision up, but you can hold two thoughts at the same time. 
Like that right there. we're here today, but that sucks. That's not right. That blows. Yeah. And I live my life now to honor that experience. Mm-hmm. Truly, I do. I will always be making up for that. Yep. Always. Thank you. I got you. All right. That's all we've got here. Yeah. That's all we've got. I hope this was helpful. Yeah. I, again, workshops coming up June 8th. Bucket. Still got time. There's still space. It's going to be great. Can't, Can't wait to wait. see all these people there. I cannot wait to meet some of these people. Mm-hmm. Like active people in the community that we get to see like on the internet. Uh-huh. Get to get to hang out with them in I person. I know. I'm so I'm excited. pumped about that. Hugs for all. <laughs> we haven't ordered food yet. We haven't decided what we're going to feed everyone. Um, <laughs> talking about this. If you're attending and you got some ideas, no, share some options. What? <laughs> Just curious, man. People are tr- coming from out of town. Like, do we feed them okay, Tex-Mex? Okay, that's true. We feed Is them there Tex-Mex? something that you haven't them... had that you would want to try? We're going to go barbecue? I was thinking about Tex-Mex. I was thinking about or Tex-Mex. Or Hutchins or something? I, I'm not doing Hutchins. You're crazy. That's true, man. They charge like $100 I was good. That for like, pound I mean, of brisket. Yeah. <laughs> People are crazy. That stuff is good, though. Oh, my gosh. That Okay, if you're coming to town, I would suggest going there for dinner or lunch the next day if you, you gotta can. you got to check it out. Or if you're coming in on that Friday. Best brisket you'll ever have. Then go there because it's amazing barbecue. But maybe we can throw some Tex-Mex in there. I would, we'll, Yes, like Matt said, send us a message and see if there's anything that you like have been wanting to try in the Dallas area. Yep, that'd and be And we'll fun. tell you if it's worth it or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay, we're going to bed. Thank you guys for listening. Appreciate you always being here, always listening, always being there for us as well. Um, your support means everything. Uh, the reviews that we get mean the world to us. And if you haven't already subscribed to the show, please follow, subscribe to the show. Um, leave a comment, like it. The more you guys interact, the more people can find this thing. Mm-hmm. More people can get help. More people can hear this message. More people can listen. There are so many people out there that don't know this exists. We hear every day from people. Yep. That are like, I just stumbled across this. I've been going through this by myself for years thinking I was all alone. Yeah. Your comment, your review, your like, subscribe, all those things help. could make the difference of someone finding it or not. Yes. So please do that. Please help us out. We don't ask a lot of people, but that's one thing I would please, 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 please yep. do that for us. We appreciate you. it. Do us a solid. Thank you. All right. Well, that's all we have until next time. I'm Matt. I'm Paige. And we'll see you. Bye. <laughs>